we can stop. Welcome back to the eBay shed. Ladies and gentlemen, I just got back from uh, a couple places. I stopped at the the uh, Salvation Army and the Open Door is what they're called. They're basically just Goodwills. They're just not actually that brand, whatever you want. They're not, not, not that chain. They're not a Goodwill. Uh, but over here, I got the aftermath. I got to clean all of this up. I finally opened the Jurassic Park 36 packs uh, of collector's cards from 1993. So I don't think that video will be up before this one. But you might just have to check. Make sure you look um, and see if it's already uploaded. If not, you should be seeing that uh, soon. Make sure you guys watch that. That was a really fun video. I had a lot of fun, as you can tell. So I need to, <laughs> I need to clean that up first of all. And then, uh, but I'm going to show you guys the finds real quick. Nothing too exciting until we got to a certain a certain place. So I went to um, the open door first, and I got news from Lake Wabagan. Wabagan? I don't know how to pronounce that, but uh, it's four cassettes still in the box. I looked these up. It's nothing to get excited about, but they do sell from time to time, and I think I can get like five to ten bucks. It's got a dollar on it, but I bundled it with a couple things that I was just buying for home. I bought uh, two binders that I can put cards in now that we're doing the card pack opening videos, and I think I got those for 50 cents a piece. Um, yeah, I, I spent a dollar fifty, so she, she charged me 50 cents for these, essentially. Um, so, I just, I would rather not leave empty handed, even if what I do buy isn't the craziest, especially if I'm only, you know, spending 50 cents. It's not no big deal for me to list it, throw it on the shelf. And if it doesn't sell for two years, like that's not, not ideal, obviously, but you know, a $5 bill is a $5 bill. So, um, and keeping up with daily listings is very important with the algorithm. So stuff like this can kind of help just string that along, even if the profits aren't really crazy and exciting. So, uh, gonna have to use the heat gun. I absolutely hate. So actually, I mean, normally they just write on the product. So I'm surprised they didn't just use a big Sharpie on here. So I'm gonna have to use the heat gun to get that sticker off, but no big deal. Then I went to the Salvation Army and I actually found this first, but we'll get to that in a second. Um, in the back, they had this in a giant box full, uh, like a tote full of wires. Uh, I looked up its Radio Shack. I looked up the model number there. And I, I think it's like, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> You hook a phone line into it, so I think it might be like a speaker com for like old school phones. I I'm not 100% sure to be honest, but I looked it up and I think these things were going for like 10 bucks too. Uh, so I think I paid like 50 cents or a dollar for that, no big deal. Um, again, just like I said, I try to keep stuff that I can list just to keep up with listings uh, because the, the eBay algorithm rewards people that list on a daily basis. Uh, the more you list, the more you will sell. It seems like, I, I mean, obviously if the more things I'm listing, the more chances I have to sell, but it, it goes further than that. Basically everybody that does what I do pretty much seems to agree on the fact that they more than likely seem to be promoting all this stuff. All this is my listed inventory. Um, it's about, I believe last time I looked, it's like $17,000 worth of listings. These listings, will get promoted more. The algorithm helps out my existing listings more if you just keep up with daily listings. No, that's not confirmed, but most people that do what I do seem to agree that that's, that seems to be the case. The more you list stuff on a daily basis, the more your old stuff, your existing listings will be promoted and the more they'll actually sell. So anyways, uh, then I found the Crusher Com Can Compactor. Uh, it's funny because I actually just bought one of these not too long ago because I thought, um, you know, whenever I'm drinking uh, a canned beverage, why not crush the can, save that and turn in the aluminum, you know, help the planet a little bit, get a little bit of money back on recycling the aluminum and use that money for yard sale cash, whatever, you know. Uh, so I actually bought, uh, not this exact one, but something similar, um, fairly recently just off of Amazon. And uh, I wouldn't have if I would have found this first, but it's pretty nice. Um, it looks like it's new stock, to be honest, that I'm, I'm guessing maybe, because there's still like price tags here. This was the, the price tag on the from the store I bought it from, but these price tags were here. So I, I don't know if someone had this and just no one ever bought it. It looks in fairly good shape, but uh, much to my surprise, I, I looked it up since it was still like in the original packaging and it looks like I can get like a $20 bill plus shipping out of that because it is very heavy, uh, but people were paying $20 plus the shipping. So uh, I paid four for it. I haggled a little bit and uh, 
yeah, so, you know, again, nothing really exciting there, but something to pick up. So then, this was actually the first thing that I found, but this little guy, they have a glass case where they usually put like cameras and, you know, just anything electronics or they're worried about people stealing. And this was on the top shelf of the glass shelf, the glass cabinet. Um, and the top shelf is only like three feet high, right? So luckily I happened to be bent down looking at some other stuff in the bottom of the shelf. And I saw this because on top of it, they had like a hand saw just laying on top of it. And then on top of the glass cabinet, they had other stuff sitting on top of that as well. So it was like super buried. You couldn't even see it unless you were bent down looking. And I saw that this was a Game Boy Advance case. And I usually pick these up at yard sales and stuff. I found quite a bit of them over the summer. Usually people want like 25 cents, 50 cents, buck, whatever. And I usually sell them for like 10 to 15 bucks. So I thought, you know, I couldn't see a price tag, but I thought, okay, even if, you know, it's just the case and it's like a buck or less, I'll probably just pick it up, sell the case. Um, but I asked the lady if she could come over and let me look uh, at, at, at something in the case and she pulled this out for me and let's just say we caught them slipping. I knew as soon as she handed it to me that there was something inside and it's just a question of what. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a Game Boy Advance SP, not in the greatest condition. It's got some scuffs and everything uh, and it is the 01 model, the AGS 01, uh, not the 101. The 101 has they both have backlit screens, but the 101 is a lot brighter. Uh, so I'll just clean this up. The inside's actually cleaner than the outside. The outside's a little scuffed up. But I still think if I get a charger with this and it charges, I think I can get uh, easy 30 bucks out of that if it's working, obviously. Uh, the case, unfortunately, has a little bit of a tear there, but I still might be able to sell it for five or 10 bucks. Uh, and then as soon as I saw this, I just closed it and said, yep, I'll take it because it had a $6 price tag stuck to the front here. So uh, yeah, I'm guessing they labeled it for six bucks because they didn't have the charger and they were like, well, we don't know if it works. So, um, but I didn't, I, like I said, I didn't ask any questions or try to get any money off. I just zipped it up as soon as I saw this little red cartridge, because if you know anything about Game Boy games, that would be Pokemon Fire Red, which is about a $40 bill right there. As long as it's authentic, I have uh, the tools to take it apart, make sure that the, uh, the board, the game, uh, on the inside is the authentic version of Pokemon Fire Red because uh, honestly, even the bootlegs are worth, I think, 10 bucks. Um, so, you know, even if it wasn't authentic, it would still be worth it for, you know, the fact that I paid for six for the whole bundle. But uh, I'm pretty sure that's authentic. And so that's a $40 bill right there. So that's pretty good. And then we got Crash Nitro Kart, um, Crash the Huge Adventure. We got The Incredibles, we got Monkey Ball Jr., we got Pac-Man Collection by Namco, uh, Super Mario Brothers 3, or Super, I hate the way that they named all the, the Mario Brothers games that they re-released on the Game Boy Advance have the dumbest names, like Super Mario World 2, I believe, is Super Advance, Super Mario Advance 3, or something like, it's just weird how they did them all. So Super Mario Advance 4 is actually Super Mario 3, uh, but that's a, I think that's like a 10, I know, I think that's like a 15, $20 game. Uh, we got Lilo and Stitch and some Lizzie McGuire game. So basically what I'll do is if the Game Boy is working itself, I'll probably bundle the Incredibles, Lizzie McGuire and Lilo Stitch. I don't think those are worth really anything. I mean, they're still like five bucks maybe. Um, and then bundle that with a Game Boy, try to get 40 bucks out of the Game Boy, maybe 35, $40 with a charger. And then I'll probably sell uh, the two Crash games. I'll probably sell individual. Yeah, I'll probably sell all this other stuff individual. And um, or maybe I'll even sell the case with the, the Game Boy. I don't know. But basically you're looking at 75, Eh, actually closer to 100 bucks because if the Game Boy works and that's authentic, that's 75 bucks right there. Um, so that the rest of that, you know, is probably going to get me up to a hundred dollar bill. So for six dollars, not a bad find whatsoever. This stuff wasn't really exciting and I was kind of like, eh, but then, you know, then sometimes you find the more so diamond in a rough. I mean, it's not a huge home run, but I'd say it's at least a double or a triple. So I'm happy anyways, guys. Uh, that's what's going on right now. I gotta get that cleaned up. Um, I still need to start organizing a little bit. I just need to consolidate. Like people people are triggered by 
uh, the mess in here. I don't think it's that bad. Again, when something sells, every morning I come in here, I probably ship 50 packages a week. It's very, very seldom that I spend more than a couple minutes looking for any one item whenever I look at my uh, orders and go to pull products. So I know where everything's in here. It's not a big deal to me, but I do need to consolidate these shelves, which is just stuff that uh, is either parts or pieces, you know, waiting for other stuff to come in or just loose games that don't have very much value uh, that I'm not really sure what to do with yet or whatever, whatever. Oh, that's all unlisted inventory. So I think I can consolidate all that stuff almost to one. I might be able to free up like an entire shelf, uh, which would be really, really good. And then on the other side over there where you guys know I'm setting up the new room, I, ha I showed that off in one video. I've got one shelf set up in there entirely composed of clothing and I've got three brand new shelves that haven't been uh, constructed yet. I gotta get that couch out of there, get those shelves set up uh, and, and get ready for the influx of inventory coming with yard sales. Also, all this M&M stuff. If anybody's interested in M&M stuff and you wanna DM me like on uh, Instagram or Discord, I need to get rid of all this M&M stuff, so I'll cut you a deal. Um, if you've got somebody that's an M&M fan or whatever, uh, some of this stuff has decent value, but it's really, maybe I should just bust it out and start listing some of the better stuff on eBay. Like that guy back there is still in the box. Some of this stuff's pretty cool, but um, last time I researched some of it, it was nothing really to get excited about. I just would love to have those two shelves ready by the time yard sales start back up. So. Um, yeah, that's what's going on. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Check out out here, guys. Check this out. I just, stop, man. I don't want any more, no more snow. I'm done with it. It's been like, for a solid month now, we get snow once or twice a week and it's just getting a little crazy. So I wanted to show you guys real quick. Uh, first of all, shout out to, man, uh, this was like, five four yeah four or five years ago uh when i was living in my previous house and i was getting best buy um geek squad to install my giant entertainment center tv that i had um i still have it now but it's in my living room anyways uh in the new house but i told them that i wanted like really good wi-fi coverage and stuff in my house and geek squad was so quick to just sell me the most expensive this luxel stuff like isn't even publicly available it's uh it's like i think they use it for like i don't know i want to say like military and hospitals i could be totally wrong on that but uh i found these in a closet they're brand new they were never installed i just paid for them unfortunately and uh so yeah i'm gonna throw those on ebay and hopefully get a little a little bit of my money back um but other than that guys I, I kind of changed the desk situation over here. I don't know if you guys remember, I had my printer, my thermal printer, so every single thing, I probably take 50 packages. On average, we'll say 30 to 50 packages. Yeah, easy. Uh, on a weekly basis um, to the post office. So every single one of those um, labels gets printed on that printer that was right here. But it, it was kind of like too messy, and whenever it's low here and you rip the labels off, Sometimes if you don't rip them off just right, it kind of messes up the feed for the next label. If anybody out there that uses the Zebra printer, you probably know what I'm talking about. But anyways, it was just, I was a little congested down here and I got to looking up here and I just had a whole bunch of boxes that I was gonna never use. So I just trashed those. Those are the, uh, the, the, the cardboard tubing that comes out of my bubble wrap. And I've been saving those for if I ever need to like ship a poster or just something weird. Um, you know, so I've been stashing those, but anyway, so I've got my, that's my stack of thermal labels here. And then this is my zebra printer, which I have now on the end. Um, so whenever I print off like a whole bunch, obviously they'll just kind of hang down here until I tear them off. But I think that's a better spot for it. And I'm kind of excited about it. So we're going to test right now. I can't show you guys the order information. So you guys can just stare at my collage of random stuff over here real quick and all right we should have should have a label coming yes it works everything's good we're good to go so um that'll be nice i think that'll be a nice little set okay so sometimes that happens i just had a couple extra sheets and whenever i put them back up there they never stay once i take them out of the package from the store and put them on there they stay but if i put them back up Anyways, all right, so let me see if I can get this label off. Again, it's kind of hard because I can't show you guys uh, 
information on the label, obviously. But there you go. It came off. And then I just slap it on there. I sold some uh, AV cables. One of those cables that, um, I don't know if you guys remember back in the day, but they sold AV cables that were multi-tapped on the end so you could hook them into a GameCube, PS2, or Xbox. That's what's in there. So anyways, we got a couple questions here that we're gonna go over. And then I wanna show you guys something important on uh, my eBay store that I get a lot of questions about. So uh, real quick, how do you research Mr. JM said, how do you research? Is it something you do beforehand in the day of sale? Also, uh, when you list in eBay, do you auction or just sell? So I basically do 99.9% .9 of all my listings by it now. Um, I only run an auction when it's like really hard to find what something is actually worth. Um, and I know that there's a lot of interest in it, a lot of interest. Otherwise, I pretty much just throw, I'd rather just throw it up, buy it now with a really high price, and if it doesn't sell, I can adjust the price as it as it sits, uh, depending on how quick I need it to go. Um, and then we got another question down here from King Pickle, and he said, do you test game discs if they have some scratches on them? If so, how long do you play the game before you can say tested and working? I replied to this, I said, yeah, I don't list anything stating that it's tested if I don't test it beforehand. Like, I'm not gonna lie and put tested and working if I haven't actually. Uh, but then I noted here, I only test games worth testing. And that means if there's a PS2 game that I'm listing and I can only sell it for $5 free shipping, I'm not worried about testing that game if it looks by eye like it's gonna load up no problem. Um, you know, and then if I have a $50 GameCube title, I'm going to test that regardless of how the disc work, looks, usually. Um, but as far as how long do I play it, if I label it as tested and working, I usually just pop it in. It, like, I don't know. I mean, I'll spend a few minutes on it, but not much more usually. I mean, I can't sit there and play a 12-hour a campaign game to completion before I list it, you know, complete uh, and, or tested and working, you know, so... Um, so that's what I'm doing there. And then I'm going to show you guys something important about the eBay store real quick. Oh, look at this beautiful YouTube channel here. So I get a lot of questions that are like, yo, Hova, uh, if, you, if you ever come, shush, if you ever come across, um, I don't know, Navy items, or if you ever come across, uh, God, insert Simpsons here, you know, whatever. If you ever come across this item, if you ever cross, come across this item, or do you have any of this stuff listed? Guys, look. I can't always, you know, like, uh, answer specifically for every one of these things. I'm not going to always have the time. If you look in my description right here, we have all my... So this old eBay is the games eBay. Um, basically working on getting everything pulled off of that account and relisted on the new eBay. Because my fees are a little bit lower on the new one and stuff like that. Hagen <laughs> boggin. Excuse me. Uh, but right here, this is my main account, New eBay. If you click on that right there, and wait for it to load because we're on slow internet out in the shed, you can see every single thing that I have listed right here. Items for sale, 693. First of all, come up here, hit the save button. This is basically like a subscription on YouTube. If you hit save right here, I follow quite a bit of stores myself. If you hit this button, you will get a weekly email of everything that I have listed in that week. Very nice to be able to keep up on what I'm listing and get it before other people do, uh, if that's something you're interested in. If you click right here, items for sale, boom, you will see all of my items for sale items for sale from Hova Flips right there, right? Okay, yeah, so if you wanna see everything that I have listed, you can click right here after you save. Just go ahead and save me, do yourself a favor, it'll be easy to get back to me and all that good stuff. Uh, hit items for sale, and then anything you type in right here, this is not now, this isn't a search for the entire website, this is a search for my store. So if you search hat, these are all the hats that I currently have listed okay if you want to see um you know if i have any pokemon items type in pokemon so i get these questions all the time and i can't sit there and think and make sure that i don't have this or i do have that or that sold already or whatever just go to my store and search like i've just showed you here so these are all the items that i have the keyword pokemon in the listing 
So if if you want to find, like I said, if you if you have any thought, of, uh, anything that you're looking for, and you want to know if I have it listed, that's how you can go about doing that. So first of all, click the link in the description, hit that save button to more or less subscribe to my uh, to my eBay account. Uh, and then you can either click items for sale here or you can come down here. It says items for sale You can click on 693 because that's all of my items for sale and Then you can do a search at top. You can sit here and just scroll till your heart's content uh, You know, I have almost 700 listings so you'll be there a while or you can just hit that search button so uh, I believe that's gonna be the end of it for today uh, I found I found these, remember, and I'm, I'm getting these listed up, and uh, I was actually a little more, I, I think I'm going to profit over over $100 on that, on that $6 fine, so I'm really excited about that. Um, but yeah, I've got, I've got to get some stuff listed today and do all the things. I asked you guys in a community tab post on YouTube here. Uh, if you guys wanted to see live streams from time to time and I'm going to elaborate on that just a little bit So I always have this iPad here to listen to podcasts or you know, maybe even watch something but more than often I, I more often than not I just listen to something I don't watch uh, as I'm listing but I'm here in this little light cubicle Hours a day, you know just snapping photos of all kinds of stuff and then listing all that stuff and I thought why not while I'm doing that I can just live stream right from this iPad. Uh, I've got you know my YouTube channel signed in here and uh, the little camera on it is front facing. I'm just gonna start a live stream from the from the lot from the iPad. And uh, as I'm sitting here taking pictures and doing my listings and everything, you guys can be in the chat asking me questions, cheering me on, doing whatever you want to do. You know, I, I have a feeling I'll get, I've been getting a lot of questions in these videos. So I have a feeling I'll be answering a lot of live questions and uh, just a way for me to like, you know, break some of the boredom. I usually listen to a podcast or some music or whatever. Um, and you know, it'd be a nice change of pace to just sit there and talk to you guys, uh, maybe once a week or something like that. So, uh, keep an eye out for one of those live streams. I understand not everybody will be able to make it. You know, everybody's got different schedules and all that good stuff, but that's what's going on guys. Right now we're basically planning three videos a week, one live stream per week on this channel. So I'm really trying to amp up the content. You guys have been amazing showing it awesome love. And uh, anyways, I'm going to quit rambling now and I'll see you guys on the next video.